Hi everybody, it's Peter Zellum's Greedy Flicks Adventure 8 and today we're doing a lens test. You can tell as soon as I've got the chart out, we'll do a lens test. There are three lenses we're going to be testing and it's going to be 15 meters away from this chart. Yes, so it's telephoto lenses and let's have a look at them and see what we're going to do with them. Check it out. So in my backyard here. Da, 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 da. Right, so this is my setup. So got my tripod, trusty tripod, two cameras. So I've got the Nikon D500 here. The lens I'm using here is the Nikkor 28 to 300 millimeter f 3.5-5.6G ED version. So 28 to 300, so that's pretty convenient. So on the 500, that means it's going to be 42 to 450. So as a comparison, we've got the D700 now with a 500 millimeter Super Travanon f8 lens. And what's unusual about this lens is that it's a mirror lens. So not dissimilar to telescopes, I suppose, a mirror telescope. Okay, and then as a final comparison I'll be using is this zoom lens. It's a Tamron 150 to 600 zoom lens. So I'll be putting this one on the D700. And I'm aiming to test around that 500 millimeter across the three different lenses. Okay, so what sort of expectations do I have? The mirror lens I got many many years ago i'd say over 30 years ago and it was cheap at the time and the quality was sh sh shocking <laughs> and uh hence i've never used it it's just been there as a comparison to anything else that i've had so hence it's a comparison to these two other lenses as well you will be able to see how good or bad this mirror lens is the uh, 28 to 300 is one that I've used quite a bit because it is a small compact setup, giving me large versatility as far as focal lengths are concerned. It's great for outback travel, motorcycle travel. On the D500, in other words, crop sensor to give me that huge range of 42 millimeters, right up to 450. Tamron, the newer lens. So this will be on the D700. I'm expecting the Tamron to be the best, followed by the Nikon and the worst, and we'll see how bad it is, is this mirror lens. We'll be all mounted on the tripod, so we won't have any problems with camera shape. Let's um, go through the process, and then we'll be able to go into Lightroom and have a look in greater detail. Okay, so we'll do, I've tried some manual focus and I'll do some automatic focus as well with vibration control on at 120th of a second. Yes, well with vibration control on I think I get the best result. Okay. Alright, so we'll try and do some shots also handheld. And the shutter speed we're using is 125th of a second f8 at 450. Okay. First indication. Pretty damn good handheld. Do the same shot with a D500. 300. So that's 450. Uh, vibration control, automatic focus. Let's see how we're going. One, two, five at the second, and F8. Yeah, pretty good shot. I'll do one with the mirror lens. That's gonna have a whole bunch of vibration, I think, at that speed, 125th per second, but I'll be interested to see how sturdy I can hold it. So I've got one, obviously, with it uh, on the tripod, and we'll try then handheld. Okay. One, two, five, F8. And hand hook. And do I have a whole bunch of camera shake? <laughs> yep. I definitely have camera shake. All right, so we'll try and take it up to say 500 of a second. 
Okay, do I get a better shot? Uh, yep, less camera shake. That's good. All right, into Lightroom we go. Okay, so here are the three photographs. They've all been color corrected. Um, they've all been cropped so that we've got the same size photograph. And then the raw file has been exported into a JPEG file making them the same size again so it's easier to make the comparison. The first one here is the Nikon 28-300mm to 300 millimeter on the D500 so that means it's a crop sensor so instead of 300 it's actually 450. The next one is the Tamron 150 to 600, and the last one here is the Super Travanon mirror lens, the 500 millimeter. Okay, so the first two lenses, the Nikon and the Tamron, I found if I had vibration reduction on in both cases. So vibration reduction on the Nikon and vibration control, I think VC, on for the Tamron. Uh, it gave me the best results. On the tripod, as well as handheld, I was able to hand hold 125th of a second. In the Nikon case, I was actually on 60th of a second. So the vibration reduction works really well. Mirror lens was, of course, manual focus. Let's have a look at the first two, the Nikon and the Tamron. And we'll zoom straight into the center. And what are we looking at here? So we're at 300%. Maybe if we just go down to 200%, there you go. 200% now. The uh, Nikon lens on the left and the Tamron on the right. All right, well, both are looking pretty sharp to me. These charts are laminated and therefore we're getting reflection off the plastic laminate. That's the reason for the unusual lighting that we've got here. But if we're looking at the, the detail, um, they're pretty close to each other at 200%. And uh, when we go up to the top here, maybe the Tamron is holding it better towards the top edge here. Let's have a look how close we are to the top edge. All right, so we can actually see there in this little view on the left here, how far close to the top. I think the uh, Tamron is, is better from the center to the edges than the Nikon is. You can see here the Nikon is done you're losing contrast and detail here where it's nice and contrasty in detail with the Tamron. We're moving across to the right hand side, let's see what we get. Um, look, it's hard to say. I mean they look both looking pretty much the same here. On the right hand side, if we go down the bottom here, both are looking pretty fine. Maybe the Tamron's got a little bit more on the Nikon, hard to say. We come down to the bottom. They're so close to each other. It's hard to tell them apart. Both are great lenses. Both are very detailed. Very happy with both. As long as you nail the focus, you're laughing. And uh, they're good. All right. Well, let's do um, the Nikon and the mirror lens. Let's just see how they stack up. Go to the middle. And what do we notice? So the only way I was able to get the mirror lens without any camera shake was to bump up the speed. So up to one five hundredth of a second. So that also meant that at f8, because that's what the lens is, I had to bump up the ISO to 1600. Whereas the Nikon was set at 100 ISO. So other than the grain which you would probably see a little bit coming up uh, between the two photographs um, that was the only way I can reduce the camera shake so what we're looking for now is just the detail on the lens so in the center you can see there's a big difference between the Nikon and the mirror lens got more contrast on the Nikon a lot more detail on the Nikon and as we move up towards the top edge here you can still read all the writing quite clearly on the Nikon. You're having starting to get having trouble to do so with the mirror lens, and uh, things start to fade off quite a bit with the mirror lens here. To the top here, you can't really read that writing at all. Likewise, when we come closer to the edge, um, 
that smack in the middle here is actually not too bad with the mirror lens but you see the yeah a lot of drop off in detail compared to the Nikon and that will no doubt be the same comparing the Tamron lens with the mirror lens so okay so we've got Tamron on the left here mirror on the right got more detail on the Tamron no surprises there since we already know that's very close to the Nikon okay so that's that part of the test the mirror lens does create some out of focus bokeh which is quite unique and I'll just quickly show you that as well so, okay so I've taken a bunch of shots with the Nikkor 28 to 300 at 300 on the D500 which makes it a focal length of 450 so these are the first shots there and then I've done some with the mirror lens as well so the easiest way to demonstrate this is with a conventional lens if we look at just the the situation here where we've got uh, the car and then the out of focus area so you can see just the sparkles from the car become big rings out of focus bokeh on a conventional lens if we look at a similar shot using the mirror lens so you've got the normal shot here in focus shot on the left and then the out of focus area if we make it completely out of focus the bokeh balls become donuts it's not just the bright white areas that become donuts but anything that is uh, in a, a more of a contrasty area become donuts like the green in the window here becomes these sparkles of green donuts this grass over here becomes sparkles of yellow and green over here as well it can be creating an interesting effect and again like any lens it may be a fault in the lens but it can actually create an unusual effect and can be quite nice and creative let's go through some of these shots and you can quite see the out of focus areas the bokehs bokeh balls become bokeh donuts on the mirror lens not so obvious in this shot but just a little bit in the background also here you can see the little donuts starting to form in the background here again and obviously quite obvious there and um, if we look at the conventional lens which is this one here and your bokeh becomes quite different again to what you normally see with most lenses these type of bokeh balls as opposed to the donuts with the mirror lens it's time to wrap up well we have the d700 with the mirror lens it looks nice always this front lens looks always pretty fancy reminds me of the Hubble telescope up in the sky up in space and then um, yeah so it's about the same size you can see the D700 there the D500 here the 28 to 300 zoom and the 500 mirror lens there similar size but obviously this combination is much more versatile than that the detail, the level of contrast is not as good as the other two lenses here as the Nikon and also as the Tamron lens but it's up to one's creativity how this lens is used. I haven't used it hardly at all so what does that say about my creativity? <laughs> well I haven't been able to get a, a shot, put it this way, I haven't taken a shot with the mirror lens that I've liked regardless of how creative I've been with it. Anyway, maybe I just have to work on that. The Tamron is great, but you can see the difference in size. You can understand why I use this so much for travel. One camera body, great versatility with regards to the focal lengths, and it gives you a nice and sharp image. I hope that's been useful. Have you ever you tried a mirror lens? I'm sure there's much better examples than this mirror lens but I've never put my hands on another one so I can't tell you 
whether they are much better than this one or not. A lot of telescopes and mirror telescopes. I hope it's useful. Maybe that will encourage you to go get yourself a secondhand mirror lens somehow, take some shots and see how it compares to a conventional telephoto. I'd be interested to find out your ex experience as well. Hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up. That's how you support the channel. If it's the first time to my channel, then please do subscribe and press notifications and you'll be notified when the next video is out. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.